Hey folks, this is Saiyan Chan. In today's episode, I'm going to explain why it is important for men to understand the expectations of the women that they are dating wherever they are, whether it be in Colombia, the United States of America, any Western country or any other country. But in today's episode, I'm going to focus more on Colombia and briefly about the United States of America. So let's just start with the United States of America and other modern Western womanized Anglo first world relatively rich countries such as the USA, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, etc. For you guys who are already here in my channel, uh, you probably are frustrated with what the heck is going on down there, uh, going on in your dating marketplace. And for the growing uh, passport movement, the passport bros who think that it's a better uh, idea for them to go travel overseas in the hopes of uh, finding love, dating, family formation, etc. I would say that for the majority of, 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 of the average men, the, they already do not meet the expectations of the women in their country or in their home city, right? This is, uh, and I'm just being, I'm not, not knocking the guys, I'm just pointing it out by by what the women that are in your local dating marketplace are doing, what they are, who they are choosing to see and date and, and hook up with, etc., and who they are choosing to spend their time and give their attention and their bodies to, those guys are not you, right? These women, by their actions, have clearly communicated that but most average men, that they don't want them, and they don't need them, right? So that closes off the the, the Western part. If you if you're able to making make things work in your your city, cool. That's that's fine. I was one of those guys. I thought I was doing great in New York City when I was living there in the middle of Manhattan until in search of salsa dancing, I went to Colombia and I said to myself, "Holy moly, this is way 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 better than I could have ever imagined." All right. So let's put that aside. Already, you guys don't qualify to most of the girls. So let's move on to Colombia. I come here night after night to teach guys about Colombia and explain the opportunities are there to date and meet the local women and also the associated risks and problems because I, re I, I understood and learned during the lockdowns starting in 2020 how many men were unprepared for the modern dating marketplace, which has shifted drastically starting around the year 2012 when Tinder became a thing, right? The 2000s, 90s and the 2000s and before that, those were great for meeting girls, right? But I can explain that there are a few monumental shifts that happened in only the past decade, which a lot of men were just not prepared for because no one prepares you for this stuff unless you decide to prepare yourself, the, the, these few changes, which has now made it so that you don't qualify for the, uh, you don't qualify or meet the expectations of the women locally, right? Right now, the modern dating marketplace in these first world countries, it's extremely competitive. With online dating and Instagram and Tinder and um, other sites, local girls in anywhere in the United States of America or places where have, that have a strong passport, you men are now competing against men internationally, including uh, famous people, athletes, rappers, scouts for athletes and, and, and rappers that you know go around sourcing girls. There are actual guys that do this as a job. And you're also competing against the local guys that might be in the country, but in a different city or a different state, guys from New York, Miami, LA, Vegas, that just, yeah, you know, a couple hundred bucks for a weekend, fly a girl in, no problem. You're competing against those guys too. And those guys who have money to burn, and there are a lot of, of millionaires and wealthy guys to that can that can do this kind of stuff in the United States. Well, they, they, those guys could con conceive, let's say they only met one girl every weekend living this type of lifestyle, or one girl every other weekend. That's 25 girls that that they could potentially go through in a year, whereas a lot of average guys are just struggling to get one, right? So the, the, the competitive landscape is incredible. And for the average guy, 
making around average money, just trying to get by, the competition is very, uh, is, is very high. Reason number two is there is a scarcity of women that that of the type the and caliber of women that men want. Forget the, the FBI, feminine, beautiful, and inspirational. Inspirational. Let's just call, let's just go to the weight. Only thirty percent are of a weight which most men would find ideal and appealing and would and would really like. So you got a hundred percent, the upper limit, a hundred percent of the men in the country or thereabouts, the upper nineties chasing after and would really desire 30% of the women. So those women are getting on top of getting ridiculous amount of attention because of the diminished cost for men to do approaches online and, and, and not really getting rejected hard the way they would in real life over and over again. These girls are just getting bombarded by attention, right? I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. So um, that, 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 that's the reason number two. And the third reason is general cluelessness of, of men nowadays. You take young men nowadays, okay, now that, you, okay, young man in the year 2020 graduates from college, he's 22. Well, guess what? The, the mega nightclub, the club and the bar culture, it's dying and it's on its last legs everywhere throughout the world. This isn't like the 2000s where I had it in New York City where there were mega, mega, mega clubs that could hold hundreds and thousands of people and would get absolutely jam-packed with lines out the door night after night. No, all those places are gone. So you're left with much smaller venues because people are just staying home, meeting potential partners through their phones. So these men don't have as many opportunities to go out there and practice. So men of all ages, think about how many women you actually get a chance to talk to. If you were to continue your life trajectory just about where it is now and not really talk to, make a concerted effort to approach or to go out, if you only stayed the course, how many women do you think you would talk to in a year? A hundred? Maybe? Two hundred? If that's high, all right? In, in the 2000s, I went out conservatively 200 nights a year. And on every night, I would talk to at least five women. So in one year, I talked to 1,000 women. So while I didn't try to hook up with all of them, just through sheer amount of practice, I became socially smooth and skilled and savvy. How, the, the average guy sitting at home nowadays, how long is it gonna take for them to get practice talking to 1,000 different women? What, some of them it might take a decade, if not even more. So you guys are under socialized. You don't have the practice. You don't have the you don't have the skills. The opportunities for you to go practice are are much more limited. The girls are already overwhelmed with attention that they receive online and, and the pretty ones in person. So it's these doors, these windows of opportunities that existed in in, in you know plenty uh, in in a plentiful abundance for older men like me no longer exist for for men like you. Add. Add on top of that, the fact that in a huge swaths of the country, you guys were locked up for two years. How, how good do you think that did to, to your social skills and your psyche and um, you know, your mental damage? How, how, how much mental damage did that do to you guys, right? So you guys are start, not only are you not getting the opportunities that, that we had before, you guys are behind, way behind. And everyone's social skills, just went backwards. Everyone is everyone's uh, so, so social ability is stunted. Okay, now and for the older men who 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 never got a chance to see that transition from from uh, from real life to online dating, starting from the late two thousands all the way up until the, today. Let's say you just happened to have dodge all of that, but you got out of a long term relationship. Maybe you got divorced, and now you're an older man getting out into the marketplace, you're saying to yourself, holy shnikes, what the hell is going on? And you're confused. So now all of you guys who are confused, okay, are, are looking for solutions. And that's why you're on this channel and other channels that talk about passports and Thailand and Ukraine or whatever the heck, uh, wherever the heck else, Brazil, Dominican Republic, because people are presenting pot potential solutions in, in the form of those locations. But there's a problem, there's a learning curve, which is where I come in with my videos and my channel night after night because 
Just like anywhere in the world, there are risks and dangers involved. And if you don't know what you're doing, chances are you can get wrecked. So if you haven't watched the video already, go watch the video about the expectations of the, the Colombian women. And, and, and the reason why you need to do it, and here, here are the reasons exactly why you need to do it, because it's part of an overall strategy of protecting yourself and screening for the women and finding women that you like and also finding the women that you would like and who would be happy and satisfied to deal with you on your terms within uh, the limits of what you are willing to provide in terms of time and, 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 and finances and, um, and other perks that come along with uh, being with you and having them associating with, with you as a, as a man. And uh, for you to come up with an actual strategy that goes beyond, oh, let me just go to Colombia. Because so many of these travel channels, it's like, go to Brazil, go to Dominican Republic, and they go, go to Colombia. Okay, now, okay, now, so, so what, do, what do most guys do? Okay, they, they have no idea, they don't speak the language, have never traveled internationally, don't know people that have traveled internationally, don't know the local people in Colombia, um, have, have never traveled alone or by themselves, and then... First thing they do, they get on a plane, they get off at Medellin and they take take a taxi to the touristic zone of Medellin where it's everything's a tourist trap and half the girls are are, are of the professional variety that that uh, make a living off of dating. Of course they're going to get wrecked. So that's why I'm, I, I tell you about these expectations, all right? So point number one to understanding the normal expectations of most normal Colombian girls is to weed out the gold diggers, the scammers, and professionals. Because once you understand what the norms of the Colombian girls are and what they expect, which is very, very modest, if you encounter like gold diggers and scammers and professionals, they're going to be multiple standards of deviations above what those typical uh, typical Colombian girls I described would expect. So you know you can just move on. Don't even waste your time. Don't waste their time, actually, too. So it, it just works out better for the both of you. Second, the second reason is to help you understand if you may be dealing with a gringo hunter. Go check out that episode. I'll try to put it in the link in the description below. But in, in that episode, I described that there are girls, while not of the um, you know money-making variety, they are actively looking for a Western man for the purpose of marriage or family formation or long-term relationship. And they, and for whatever their reasons might be, whether it be for a visa or, or just liking the, the vibe and the aesthetics of a man, there exist these girls who, who, who might be looking for what you are and you might be able to satisfy them and, and want to deal with them, all right? So, so these girls will generally have expectations that are slightly above the, the, the average Colombian girls because they've, they consistently date and go on dates with men that are outside of their country from the Western world and are able to spend a little bit more liberally than the local Colombian man can, okay? So if you find someone, you know, that's, that's not a gold digger, but does have, you know, somewhat higher expectations and, and has standards um, that, that are relatively high and may speak a bit of English or may have traveled out of the country before to a place, you know, Europe, United States, wherever, you might be dealing with the gringo hunter. And that's okay. Just understand what you're dealing with so, so that you know how to categorize the type of woman quickly right after you meet her and, and talk to her a little bit and feel her out. Okay? So... The third, re the third thing you, you can look out for, um, you know, once you understand their expectations, is even if they're not a gringo hunter, these girls may have had their expectation raised as a result of them being able to travel internationally. There are Colombians everywhere. Uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey, Miami as, as two examples. Uh, there's a big uh, Colombian community in Sweden and France and every and and every and Los Angeles too. So everywhere you go, these uh, uh, there are Colombians and there are women living in Colombia that may have traveled to those countries for prolonged stays to visit their families to to vacation or or whatever. And as a result of getting a taste of the good life in those modern first world rich rich countries their expectations may be 
higher as a result. So while they themselves may have never dealt with a Western man before, they're not professionals. They're also not gringo hunters. Their expectations may be higher because now they might uh, be, uh, their their relatives have aided in raising the the expectations. Um, and, and their standard of living, because if those relatives working and living outside send home to uh, send money home to their family, their family is now able to live larger than the average Colombian. So by Colombian standards, her standards, the, the girl you're dealing with, her standards might be higher if she's she falls into this she's this category. Point number four, and this may be one of the most important ones. Okay, and that is you can now screen for girls. And screen for your compatibility with them where these girls have expectations where you can consistently meet for a long period of time. And that, I think, is one of the uh, things that is not talked about at all in, in the manosphere and also in, in dating overall and dating economics. Because we as men who have traditionally provided, we understand that women expect something. And it's cool. We can provide it. But what, what we don't like is when we get rug pulled, where let's say we meet a girl. She starts out with low expectations, right? And, and she has Colombian expectations. The problem is you bring her back to America. Now she starts raising her standards and her standards might raise to that of, you know, the demanding more from the guy because now they're being hit on by rich guys in the United States of America. And now her standards go up, you're not able to provide it, she's unhappy, and she leaves you. This is why we generally recommend that you do not bring girls back to your home country and you stay there and, and you move there if you want, whatever the case may be. But the point is, if you're able to find a girl whose expectations you can meet consistently for a long time, you're going to have a generally satisfied woman. It's so simple. Okay? If this girl is expecting a Colombian man that makes about double the Colombian or triple the Colombian average from anywhere from $600 to $900 a month, if you're making $2,000, $2,500, $3,000, while very modest by American standards, that is totally good and gives you a huge margin for error in, in, uh, in, in, in Colombia. So if you... If you decide to date this girl, you don't have to, you know, really reveal to her right away how much money you make. Find out what she what she wants, what she's happy with, what her needs are, and then if, let's say it's a it's a, a guy making nine hundred bucks a month. Cool, you know, dumb down your spending. Do, uh, be conservative, even by Colombian standards. Don't just break out the wallet and, and, and start making it rain. You know, go 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 to middle class, decent. Uh, but not outlandish restaurants and spend um, spend conservatively once in a while. Even if you're not struggling, pretend to be struggling so that she knows, uh, so that you can kind of calibrate to let her know that, oh, this guy actually doesn't have that much money. But, you know, a lot of girls you're going to find are going to be like, okay, they're going to try to test you. And then they're going to be like, oh, he doesn't have that much money. Okay, why? How do I know this? Because I've tried it. And, and now, and if I can find the link, I'll post it below. But... I've tried every variety of income, like pretending to be at every level of income while dating women in Colombia, from being an outright baller to, to a, basically a homeless fugitive. And I still did not have problems finding the FBI, feminine, beautiful, inspirational type of girls that would want to deal with me at any spending level. Okay, or or any level of finances, it, it, it's a trip, and and I'll I'll elaborate more on this in the near future because I think it'll be really helpful for you guys because I think talking to you guys who have only dealt with Western women, I don't think you can you, you can scarcely believe that night after night, totally just average girls that go on the fresh and fit, nothing special whatsoever, expecting guys making a hundred grand or more a year, fail. All right. So screening for girls whose expectations you can meet consistently increases the probability of you having a successful long-term relationship with them, including in marriage, because you're not going to be having monetary troubles and squabbles, okay? And the, let's see, um, and the fifth and the final reason, <laughs> which is kind of humorous, is you're going to, you'll be able to quickly analyze any 
extraordinarily beautiful women that you meet in Colombia. Because some girls you're going to meet in Colombia are straight up tens. They look like there's something out of, um, like, I don't know, like an, an anime or something like picture perfect with, with, with ridiculous amounts of surgery, amazing looking in a dress, long black hair to their butts, you know, eyes done, nails done, they're smelling all good, skin looking all creamy and beautiful and all that stuff like that. I'm okay, here, here it comes. Here, the, the bubble burster. You ready? So many of those girls are monetized and you can't really blame them because in a country where people are poor, sometimes all these girls have to rely on to get by are their looks. And those girls, which are extraordinarily beautiful and are highly in demand, even by the, the men in their in their country, you know, football players, uh, soccer, that is, reggaeton artists, uh, 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 you know, just, just rich people in general, a lot of those girls are unfortunately monetized. Well, I'm saying you will, you, you will find ones that aren't. Many of the exceptionally beautiful ones are. And a lot of the ones that have a lot of surgery done and look great as a result of the surgery, where do you think, who do you think paid for those surgeries? They're dudes that are, that are sponsoring them, okay? So now, so if you go in there and, and, you tr and, and you're spending at, you know, pretending to be at, you know, slightly above average Colombian man standards and spending, and spending very modestly, they're not gonna wanna deal with you. It's a waste of freaking time for them. And then you'll know, okay, is, is this girl looking, does this girl have a higher expectations than what I'm able to meet? Well, you know, and then if, if, if you're trying to date nines and tens and you consistently get shot down if you don't have a large bankroll, well, that's because she's monetized, all right? Folks, I hope this video has been interesting. For any of you who need some life coaching or some help with trip planning, Say and Chan Life Coaching and consulting, consulting will be launching soon, but it's available now for my YouTube viewers. Please uh, email sayinchan at protonmail.com if you're interested in that. For everyone else, talk to me. I want to hear some comments, right? Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Those are free. Share with other dudes who you think might need to know this so that they don't get wrecked. And help me get to grow this channel and get my subscribers up so I can continue spreading the word and helping out men who are struggling in the modern Western world. All right? This is Zane Chan signing off, reminding us all to always cogitate and analyze.